change is inevitable in life. And when you embrace it, you will begin to see change as an opportunity for growth. These are the inspiring words from Jack Canfield, a motivational speaker. And I have to agree that the only permanent thing in our world is change. We always encounter it in our lives. Teenagers like you experience physical and behavioral changes, right? We can also observe changes in our environment brought about by modernization. Our perspectives and level of knowledge and skills likewise change as we grow. Indeed, we encounter a lot of changes. Today, join me as we investigate important changes brought about by chemical reactions. Let us unleash the saisay at husay ng inyong mga sarili as we explore the wonders of physical science. Tara, samahan niyo akong maglakad at matuto sa makasaysayang lugar ng Intramuros! In our previous episode, you joined me and Chef Frenzy of Metro Cafe in the Chemistry Kitchen, and we explored the structure, properties, and functions of the ingredients of life, the biomolecules. We flared things up in the kitchen and savored the sweet taste of success as we gained more knowledge about carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. The science of chemistry is mostly about change. From the beginning of the universe up to our present day, everything that happens around us has something to do with changes brought about by chemical reactions and certain processes. Every time we breathe, cook, eat our food, and clean our homes, different chemical reactions take place. The same thing is true every time a vehicle engine burns fuel and gives off exhaust gases. When metal pipes rust and marble statues corrode. And when plants make food through the process called photosynthesis. But what exactly is a chemical reaction? Does this involve complicated numbers and equations? Well, yes at some point. But don't worry. I will guide you in this challenging but fun journey. Di ako tulad ng iba na sa ere, ikay pinabayaan. Sasamahan kita, walang iwanan. Let's start discovering the beautiful and historical sceneries here in Intramuros. And let's get to meet people around here and share more scientific knowledge with them. Magandang araw para sa isang magandang binibini. Kamusta? Ako si Teacher Tony mula sa Deppet TV. So we are actually making an episode for Senior High School Physical Science. So game ka ba para, ma, para sa isang short interview? Uh, sige, sure. Anong pangalan mo? Sam. Sam. Hi, hi Miss Sam. So uh, may tanong lang ako. So sa Deppet kasi naniniwala kami na sharing is caring. So for today, mag-share ako sa iyo ng scientific knowledge about uh, chemical reactions. Okay? okay? So I have here some pictures lang. So ang task mo, para lang kita ng ano, estudyante, ang task mo ay i-identify kung ano yung mga nasa pictures na to. So first picture, ano nakita mo? Uh, kadena na ano? Kadena ng may kalawang. kalawang or rust. Pangalawang picture? Uh, ano naman yan? Uling na may apoy. Ayan, so nagbabagang uling. Ayan. Pangatlong picture natin? Pangatlo, baso na may ano, nahinulog na tablet. Ayan, so may hinulog na tablet at yung tablet ay nag-form ng... Bubbles. Mga bubbles. Okay. Sige nga, yung pang-apat na picture kung kaya mong i-describe. Ano kaya nakita natin dyan sa uh, pang-apat na picture? Tingin ko ano yan. Panis na gatas. Parang gatas, uh -huh. yes. Kapag ang gatas kasi pag napapanis sila or napapanis yung gatas, nagkakaroon ng mga formations na mumuo yung mga uh -huh. proteins ng, ng gatas. Okay, so very good. Okay. Kung naalala mo pa ang mga chemistry subjects mo way back no high school, no? So, ang next na task mo ay tulungan mo akong i-decode yung mystery word natin for today. Okay. Ready? Okay. okay. So yan, Miss Sam, kung kanina nahulaan mo yung four pictures natin, ang gagawin mo naman ngayon is you have to arrange our jumbled letters para maiayos yung mga letters na yan at makabuo ka ng words na related sa apat na picture na to. Ano, game? Game. Okay, so let's begin. Tulungan kita dyan. Alright, so, ready? Let's go!
chemical. Okay, mukhang nakukuha na ni ate ang ating mystery word. Congratulations! Ayan. So, ang ating mystery word ay chemical reaction. So, can you remember ba ano ba yung chemical reaction na yan? So, sa science or sa chemistry, what is chemical reaction? So, sa picture natin na apat kanina, so we can have visual clues or yung mga pwede natin tignan that we can, uh, that, that can serve as indicators para malaman natin na ang chemical reaction ay talagang naganap sa different states of matter. Matter interacts with other matter of certain types to form new products through a process called chemical reaction or chemical change. It is a process through which one or more substances are changed into different or new substances. Some visual clues or indicators that we can look for to tell whether a chemical change has happened include a change in color, a change in temperature, the formation of bubbles, and the formation of precipitates. We call the original substances reactants, and the new substance or substances formed after the reaction are called products. In this example, a rusting metal chain, which one is the reactant and which one is the product? So sa science, gumagamit tayo ng symbols and formulas to represent chemical reactions. So ang kalawang, yung sa first picture natin kanina, di ba? Ang kalawang R or rust ay nabubuo kapag nag-react ang iron at oxygen. So we can say that iron reacts with oxygen gas to produce rust. Or sa chemistry, ang tawag natin ay iron oxide. So yan ang ating pinaka-chemical equation. So sa tingin mo, Miss Sam, ano dyan yung reactants at ano naman yung products? So nisa yung nag-react? Si iron, tama, at saka si oxygen gas. So sila yung dalawa yung nagsama, nag-react. Tapos yung products natin, syempre, ang iron oxide. iron oxide. So very good. We can convert a word equation to a chemical equation by replacing the names of the reactants and products with their corresponding symbols and formulas. We use the plus symbol on the left side of the equation and it can be read as combines with or reacts with. If it is on the right side of the equation, it is read as and. The arrow that separates the reactants from the products can be read as produces or yields. There are times that we need to indicate the physical state of each reactant and product. To do this, we use italicized letters in parentheses. S for solid, L for liquid, and G for gas. Substances dissolved in water are known as aqueous, and we label them with AQ. Going back to our reaction, we can write it as a chemical equation like this. We have to take note that both the word equation and chemical equation do not give information about the amount of reactants and products involved in the reaction. The next thing we have to do is to balance the chemical equation. In any chemical equation, the law of conservation of mass applies. Always remember that the total mass and the total number of atoms of each element in the reactant side should be the same with that of the product side. To balance our equation, we list the elements and count the number of atoms of each element in the reactants and in the products. There is one iron and two oxygen atoms in the reactants, while there are two iron and three oxygen atoms in the product side. The next step is we have to change the coefficients of the molecules, or the big number written before the chemical formula. Remember that we cannot change the subscripts or the small numbers in our formula, only the coefficients. We can write the following coefficients to balance our equation. 4 for iron, 3 for oxygen, and 2 for iron oxide. Let us check whether the number of atoms are now equal for both sides. There are four iron atoms and six oxygen atoms in our reactant. The same goes with our product side. 
our chemical equation for iron oxide or rust is now balanced. Balancing equations require patience and analysis. Like what I always say, you just need to be focused, to be disciplined, and to be determined until the end. And surely, you will be able to balance chemical equations correctly. Practice, practice rin. Parang utak, di kalawangin. After that mind-boggling encounter with equations, let us now relax our minds and continue our intramuros adventure. Since Intramuros is full of history, here's a piece of historical trivia for you. Intramuros, the walled city, was built to be the political and military base of the Spaniards in Asia during their regime in the Philippines. And now, it has become a popular destination for historical walking tours, allowing us to be immersed in our country's rich culture and history. Did you know that there are a lot of endemic Philippine plants here in Intramuros and in Metro Manila? In fact, I am now in the middle of a native fern garden here in Baluarte de San Diego. Another fun fact, do you know where to find Nilad, the plant which gave the city of Manila its name in Intramuros? Come and join me as we stroll around this place and discover more interesting facts as we continue our walking tour. Let's breathe some fresh air and discover different plants growing around here. Let's meet one plantito or plantita and try to challenge him or her with interesting science questions. I think natagpuan na natin ang certified plantita. So anong pangalan mo is certified plantita? What's her name? Donna Moreno. Oh, yan. Hi, Miss Donna. Hi. So pwede ba naming may challenge ka yung grupo ninyo to uh, certain scientific questions that I have prepared? Sure. Okay. Sige nga, what are the needs? Ano yung mga needs ng plants para sila yung mabuhay? Sige nga, what are the basic needs? Of course, yung basic needs yung sunlight, water, and good soil. And syempre, hindi, ma hindi makukompleto yan kung walang hangin or carbon dioxide na galing sa tao. Okay, so carbon dioxide ay galing sa ating mga animals, just, just animals and humans. Okay? And because sa Deped TV, naniniwala kami that sharing is caring, so, familiar ba kayo sa photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is the process wherein plants make their own food. Okay? So, in this specific episode, we are actually talking about chemical reactions. So, alam nyo ba yung mga kailangan ng plants para makapagproduce sila ng mga specific compounds or substances na kailangan nating mga tao? So, actually, I have here the chemical equation for photosynthesis. For our equation, we have... So you can see the numbers. Okay, yung mga numbers na yan represents the number of molecules na kailangan ng mga plants para makapag-photosynthesize sila. So they need six molecules of carbon dioxide. So yung, again, ang carbon dioxide ay galing sa ating mga animals and humans. They also need, of course, you've mentioned, six molecules of water. And then, of, of course, very important or very essential na ingredient para makapaggawa sila ng sarinilang food ay, of course, they need light energy. The main source niyan, of course, is the sunlight. What do you think are the products? Ano yung napoproduce ng mga plants? You have C6H12O6, and that is your glucose. Yan ang uh, isa sa mga distinct characteristics ng mga plants. They can make their own food. So nakakagawa sila ng sarili ng pagkain. So they don't need to eat other plants, eat other animals para mabuhay. Okay? And of course, very important din, every time na gumagawa sila ng food via photosynthesis, they are producing uh, six molecules of oxygen. Okay? So ba, parang ano lang, balikan lang. They, we, we, we give them carbon dioxide and they give us oxygen. See? Even plants can perform certain chemical reactions to produce their own food and to continue performing their important roles in nature. Like the plants who are energized by the sunshine, I think it is also time for us to be energized by doing some simple exercises. Rizal Park has also become a favorite hangout for fitness enthusiasts who want to do their exercises in a peaceful and relaxing place. 
Did you know that every time we do prolonged and intense exercises, a chemical reaction takes place in our body? Let us walk and find someone we can talk to and get to know some facts about his or her exercises routines. Kadang araw, pwede ka bang maano, ma-interview sandali? Makabala kita sa pag-exercise mo. Ako nga pala si Teacher Tony from Depet TV. So we are actually making an episode about chemical reaction. So pwede ka ba? Game ka ba? Anong pangalan mo? Aaron Garnon Balma. Okay. So Aaron, gano'n kadalas ka nag-stay dito sa Dometa para makapag-exercise? Uh, Tuwing umaga po, mga... 4 a.m. hanggang 7. Okay. Araw-araw yun? Opo. Okay. Ah, so talagang ka ba? Athlete ka ba? Yes. Ah, ano sports mo? Basketball. Basketball. So sa part ng training ninyo na everyday nag-routine. So yung, ngayong pandemic, ano yung changes na nangyari? Or nag, uh, napansin mo changes sa mga routines? Nagkaroon na po ng ano, online workout yung training namin. Okay. So isa yun sa mga ano, on isang platform. Nag-online workout. So aside from online workout, nag- physical talaga na ano dito na nag-interview. So, so ngayon lang, interviewin lang kita about as, uh, gusto ko lang mag-share ng uh, counting facts about science. So actually there is or there are chemical reactions na nangyayari sa katawan natin every time na tayo ay nag-exercise. Okay? So ang first na uri or first type ng reaction is what we call the aerobic respiration. So ano bang pakiramdam kapag tayo ay uh, nag-exercise? Uh, unang una siyempre napapagod. Napapagod. So ano pa? Inihingal. Inihingal. Bakit kaya tayo inihingal? Siguro sa ano na rin natin, kinakapos tayo ng oxygen. Very good. So actually, tama yung sagot mo. So kailangan kasi ng katawan natin ng oxygen. So may idea ka ba kung bakit oxygen at hindi ibang klaseng gas? Wala. So, explain ko sa'yo ah. So, ang chemical reaction natin doon is ang tinatawag na aerobic respiration. So, aerobic, ibig sabihin, may presence ng oxygen. Okay? So, yung C6H12O6, ito yung glucose na nasa, nakukuha natin every time na kumakain tayo. So, nasa dugo natin yan. So, yung glucose na yan, hindi ito siya makakapag-produce ng energy kapag walang oxygen. So, kailangan natin na isang molecule ng glucose plus anim na molecules ng oxygen. Okay? So, yun ang ating magiging uh, reactants. So kapag nag-react na ang glucose at ang oxygen, ang mga products na mapoproduce ng katawan natin ay familiar ka ba dito? CO2? So, CO2 is carbon dioxide. So ito yung hininga natin or yung hini, uh, hangin na hininga natin palabas. In-exhale natin. Okay? So aside from carbon dioxide, nakakapag-produce din. Every time na hininga tayo, may moisture content yun. So may water. Six molecules ng water. Siyempre, dahil nga gumamit ng oxygen, syempre, meron tayong energy. Kaya nga meron nakakapag-exercise pa rin tayo. So, we have 36 ATPs or adenosine triphosphate. Ito yung form ng energy na kayang gamitin ng mga cells ng katawan natin. Okay? Pero minsan, Aaron, napapagod tayo, di ba? Tapos kinakapos tayo ng hininga. Ibig sabihin nun, hindi na kayang supplyan ng puso natin at ng baga natin yung mga muscle cells natin kapag nag-exercise tayo. Pero may paraan yung muscles natin para makapag-continue pa rin tayo ng ating workout or ng ginagawa natin. So yun naman ang tinatawag na anaerobic. So ibig sabihin, walang oxygen. Okay? Kung mapapansin mo, glucose lang siya. Okay, diba? So C6H12O6, that is your glucose, may enzymes lang sa muscles natin na tumutulong para ma-break down siya into Uh, C3H6O3 ibig sabihin lactic acid baka na narinig mo yan sa mga trainings mo lactic acid plus energy kung mapapansin mo kanina 36 kapag aerobic di ba? ano mapapansin mo? 2 na lang mas konti although konti kaya pa namang makatulong kaya, kaya pa namang uh, kung mag-itawid yung training natin or every time that we do uh, mga heavy exercises okay so that is called anaerobic respiration and then sometimes matanong kita nakaka-experience ka ba ng ano, mga muscle cramps namumulikat ka ba so, bakit kaya tayo pinupulikat sa so, sobrang pagod po di naman nakaya na rin yun tama so ibig sabihin nun yung lactic acid na nakukol nag-build up na siya uh, actually okay siya kap on a certain level pero kapag nag-build up na sobrang sobrang yung lactic acid. Lactic acid, that's the time na nag, nag-contract na masyado yung muscles natin. Doon tayo pinupulikan. Kaya nga, uh, di ba ikaw nagtitraining ka every day. So ano bang advice ng coach ninyo about trainings? Kailangan na no? Kailangan lang po sundin yung, ano, yung workout para pagdating po ng ba, ano, game condition. O, kung baga hindi lang basta-basta na auto. Oh, gusto ko 30 minutes mag-workout ako. Ganun, diba? Kung baga may oras, tsaka may intensity. Tama ba? Hmm. Ayun. So yun lang. So that is aerobic respiration at saka anaerobic. 
Okay. Opo. Sige. Yun lang. Uh, maraming salamat sa time. Abangan mo na lang episode natin sa Deaf TV. Sige. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. How does a person feel after exercising? Does he or she become energized? Or perhaps it would make him or her hungry? And since all this walking I'm doing is exercising for me, I'm quite hungry myself. Come on, let's find something to eat. scientific knowledge about chemical reactions. And when can I prepare mo dyan? Ayan, so mushroom yung favorite na favorite na yan natin. So alam mo ba, na every time atin na tayo ay nagluto, so may chemical reaction na tinatawag na combustion. Familiar ba kayo sa word na combustion? Ano ba yung combustion? Pagkakatanda ninyo. Ayun lang. Sige, refresh natin yung brain cells ninyo. No? So combustion refers every time sa reaction na nagaganap every time na merong apoy. Okay? So sa stall ninyo, ano ba ang source ng fire nyo dito? Siyempre, yung gasol or yung LPG. Alam mo ba na LPG na yan, siyempre, meron yung tinatawag na propane. Okay? P-R-O-P-A-N-E. Propane. So ito actually yung chemical equation. So ating ito yung chemical equation. Konting ano lang tayo, chemistry tayo. Ah. Ayan. So ang propane ay chemically uh, represented as C3H3. So propane is... Uh, Propane is actually a component of our LPG or liquefied petroleum gas. So, syempre, ang apoy, hindi siya mag-aapoy kung walang oxygen. So, kailangan mo ng 5 molecules ng oxygen. So, tandaan mo yan natin ako nagluluto ka. Propane at saka oxygen. Okay? So, every time nagluluto, so that is our reactant, makakapag-produce tayo ng 4 na molecules ng water plus tatlong molecules ng carbon dioxide. So lahat ng yun ay nag, uh, nare-release sa, sa atmosphere sa hangin sa paligid natin. Plus, of course, nare-release din siya ng energy. So ano bang energy na naramdaman natin? Mainit ba? Malamig? Siyempre, mainit. So it releases a certain kind of heat energy. Okay? So ang tawag po sa reaction na ginagawa natin every time we cook using the fire from the LPG is combustion. Okay, ulit nga natin, combustion. Ayun, combustion. At dahil dyan, pang malapit ng maluto ang aking bacon mushroom with white onions. At alam mo ba ate na kapag mataas ang temperature, ano kaya ang ano, rate ng reaction natin? Mabilis or mabagal? Kapag mainit, ano nangyayari sa reaction? Mabilis ba siya or mabagal? Sa tingin nyo lang po. It is very good. Kasi kapag mataas ang temperature, it actually uh, increases the rate of our reaction. Di ba minsan kapag ayaw natin mapanis yung pagkain, anong ginagawa natin? Ayaw mapanis, nalagay natin. Yun, very good. So, sa freezer. So, sa freezer naman, malamig. So, dahil malamig, uh, napapabagal na yung uh, pagkapanis. Kasi yung pagkapanis is also a form of chemical reaction. Okay? So, temperature plays a very important role sa gano'ng kabilis yung magiging reaction ng mga bagay-bagay sa paligid. In this case, sa pagkain. Salamat, Ate Rome! I'm sure you enjoyed our food trip, right? And do you know that chemical reactions also take place during digestion? When we eat, an enzyme in our saliva called amylase starts to break down sugars and other carbohydrates into simpler forms that our body can absorb. Hydrochloric acid in our stomach reacts with food to further break it down, while enzymes cleave proteins and fats so they can be absorbed in our bloodstream through the walls of the small intestines. Intramuros is such a stunning place. And that is the reason it is one of our top tourist attractions. Its combination of majestic sceneries, vintage architecture and ruins, plus the warm and welcoming people we get to meet here, 
our reactants, result in happiness, the product, which can be likened to the chemical reactions we have been discussing. In this fun-filled travel episode, we get to appreciate our historical roots and at the same time, learn new concepts, specifically chemical reactions. We learned how to represent them by writing and balancing chemical equations. Indeed, chemistry happens not just in laboratories, but most importantly, in the different experiences that we encounter every day. For your take-home task, I want you to write your learning and realizations from today's episode. Post your answers in your social media accounts. And don't forget to use the hashtag, hashtag DepedTV Physical Science. You may also include in your post a selfie while you are watching this episode. So we can even mention you and the name of your school if your post is chosen. I would love to hear from you. So what are you waiting for? Post your answers and selfies now. And that ends our fun and exciting quest for scientific knowledge this week. Remember not to be afraid to make necessary changes in your life, especially if they will make you become a better person. Join me again next week as we discover how we can harness energy from different sources. This is Teacher Tony, and it is an honor to have guided you today. Stay inspired and be an empowered student by watching our learning episodes only here on Deped TV.